Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about barriers and distance. Um, distance, how far the neighbors are or how far people are that are going to be disturbed by the noise you generate in the room. It's a two-way street, this noise issue. Noise from outside sources getting into the room. You drummers understand that noise from inside sources leaving the room. I get a lot of calls from drummers. Especially in LA where everybody's six foot away from each other. So a barrier is a structure placed between the noise source, drums, and the receiver, the neighbor. So that's the relationship that you want to look at, noise source and receiver. So we have to build a barrier between the noise and the receiver. It could be all kinds of combinations. Process is called noise transmission. Airborne energy transfers to vibrational energy. Different things here, and this is where people get mixed up. So you have a noise source. Airborne energy hits your wall, which is the barrier. It then turns into vibrational acoustics. It goes from airborne to vibration. Same, part, same branch of physics, but different principles applied. So we can't use the same treatment that we reduce middle and high frequencies with airflow, we can with walls and structures and barriers. It's different. We're trying to manage vibration. So like I said, di same physics, but different things. Airflow technologies won't function because that's not their purpose. They don't work that way. Most of them don't work anyway, but that's the way it goes. Reduce vibrational signature, the frequency and amplitude of the signature. You want to take this big snake, turn it into a little worm, if you want to look at big to little in that uh, direction. So how do we do it? We've got to reduce vibrations. How do we reduce vibrations? Well, there's isolators, there's all kinds of devices that can help us uh, do that. Here's a good example for this kind of situation. You know, you've been seeing those of you that drive in the mountains, you see these exit ramps for trucks that lose their brakes. Well, if you look at it, it's a 45 degree ramp and it'll have stuff at the top, sand or water to stop it. But the purpose is to bleed through gravity, the forward momentum off of the truck. So it'll slow down and hopefully stop, right? Well, same thing here. We're trying to bleed the energy that's striking the barrier from an outside noise, noise source, we're trying to reduce the impact of the airborne energy so that it comes out the other side smaller, vibrationally, okay? So those are the two things. And barriers, when you look at noise, and it, we use two breakpoints when we get our noise data all the time. And we have processes for this to help you measure it. You gotta measure noise. You can't not do that. Guessing with noise is a fool's game. And you'll guess wrong. And you don't want to spend one dollar more than you have to on noise. You would never get it back. It's a permanent construction deal. It's no panel you hang on the wall. You got to build something. So measure it. Find out is it above 125 or is it below 125 in frequency. And then you have to look at how strong it is. And you have to look at, you know, make calls and stuff. So. Every material you use is frequency and amplitude dependent. You know, you, you don't use certain materials for low frequency because they don't have enough density. You don't use certain materials for high frequency because they have too much density and you're wasting money. So it all has to be calculated and designed for. If the old adage that carpenters use, our guys in the shop use it all the time, measure twice, cut once. Well, that's what you got to do with noise. You got to measure it so that you only have to fix it once. 100% fixed, 100% right. You don't want to mess with noise. No guessing. It's, it's not cost effective. It's a waste of time and money. We use the sandwich layer you can see here in the graphic. That's a, uh, one of our uh, sandwiches that go between studs. You know, in a wood frame room, you have studs. So we measure the noise, build the sandwiches, and insert the sandwiches between the studs, seal it up real good, cross uh, sleepers uh, in the studs, make it real rigid and strong, 
It's a beautiful wall. And it all, it can be done, you know, in a two by six, two by eight, maybe. It just depends on the noise. It depends on the frequency and amplitude. So you gotta know all these things, okay? All of this stuff must be measured and considered. Like I said, you don't wanna waste your money and your time and your space. Because noise treatment, you can see by that graphic, takes up a lot of space. Barrier, density, distance. Keep these things in mind, they're important. Hope this helps, thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.